Cuphead is something that we've covered a few different times on our channels, whether it be the original game or the Netflix show. Last week, the long-awaited and highly hyped Cuphead The Delicious Last Course DLC released for PlayStation, Xbox, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Much like before, we ask a very important question. Which of these bosses and old characters are the most powerful in the game? I'm Kyle with 1UP Inch, and this is Cuphead The Delicious Last Course Weak to Powerful. But before we begin, today's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where thousands of people from all over the world come together to learn new skills. We've been working really hard to grow 1UP Binge as well as our other YouTube channels over these last couple years, and one of the things that a lot of people underestimate is just how many technical skills go into running a YouTube channel. Everything from cameras to sound and audio, video editing, graphic design, lighting, and everything else in between, it never really ends. That's why Skillshare Skillshare is such a valuable resource for content creators and creatives. From photography to music, animation, and entrepreneurship, there are thousands of classes for those who want to invest in themselves and their own personal growth. As far as YouTube goes, there are a ton of classes that will help you excel on this platform taught by really dedicated and talented people. For instance, Marquez Brownlee, or MKBHD, has a really cool class on YouTube success, which goes over everything from scripting to shooting to editing and everything else in between. Many courses like this one have inspired me when I'm working on my own YouTube channels. Whatever types of projects you're working on, with Skillshare, you can come together with other creative and curious people to find inspiration and take the next steps in your creative journey. Skillshare is completely ad-free, and new premium classes are launched every week, so there's always something new to learn. And here's something awesome. The first 1,000 people to sign up using the pinned link below will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so get started on your journey today. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring us today, as well as bringing together a community of creative, ambitious, and curious people. Now let's get back to the video. Also, massive spoilers for the DLC, including the secret bosses that you fight, so just a heads up in advance. As usual, we'll be starting with the weakest character and working our way up to the most powerful. Our weakest characters on the list are the chess pawns. These pawns appear as part of King's Leap, a series of games that Cuphead and Company deal with on Inkwell Isle 4. These are very simple enemies to deal with, dropping from the roof and charging at the group. That said, they very quickly lose their heads. Literally. That is, when you parry them, they lose their heads, but continue without them, showing that they don't need them. However, despite this power, we really can't rank them any higher. Next up on our list is King of Games. It's hard to rank this man because you don't fight him. However, we can make some assumptions based on what we see. He is the leader of everyone within the King's Leap, and as such has a lot of power at his disposal. However, he is quite short and rotund, and if we go off of the chess theme, the King is the weakest piece piece in the game. However, we think he beats the pawn simply because while he doesn't fight Cuphead and company, his leadership skills could make him quite the threat. Moving on to Porkrind, who we've talked about before. Porkrind is, for all intents and purposes, not a fighter as far as we can tell. Sure, his eye patch implies he may have gotten in some sort of fight to lose his eye, but we don't know that for sure. And although he is quite beefy and might be strong, it's unconfirmed. At the very least, he has access to many charms, tools, and items that no one else has, such as powerful weapons and artifacts capable of summoning deities. If we ever saw Porkrind fighting, we may be able to rank him elsewhere, but for the moment, this is where he stands. Handing out L's, the Chess Knight ranks next. Like the pawns and the other members of King's Leap, you face the Chess Knight without weapons or charms, and you can only face him and the others by parrying, specifically parrying the plume on his head which is actually implied to be his real hair. His array of skills are very limited, but he is still quite the threat as he seems quite skilled with a sword and shield, even able to fake exhaustion to land a lucky blow. That said, the order you face the pieces makes it very clear that he is next on our list simply because you face him after the pawns. Moving on to another chess piece, we have the chess bishop. Much like the knight before him, he lands here simply because of how one note he is. While the knight has a variety of attacks, the bishop only really has one, throwing his head at you and waiting for you to parry it. 
He also may have some sort of fire manipulation as he can turn the candles on seemingly remotely. His only other major ability is the ability to create assumed illusionary copies of his flying head that go after Cuphead and friends. If his moveset was more varied or he had more up his sleeves, he may be considered more powerful. Continuing with this theme, next up is the chess rook. Much like the previous chess pieces, he ranks here because of how severely one note his moveset is. The entire battle, he sits on the side grinding away with his axe and firing decapitated heads, skulls, and sparks at you. Despite carrying a large axe, he never swings it, which severely limits how powerful he really could be. Sure, he's not as large as the bishop, but he does have more health and a slightly more diverse moveset and does seem quite intimidating overall. Now, our first real boss on this list is Glumstone the Giant, fought in the level Gnome Way Out. Glumstone is one of the two bosses you can face immediately after starting the DLC, and it's obvious as to why. In reality, while he has a lot of attacks, none of them are really all that powerful. He may have an army of gnomes at his supposed beck and call, but they seem to be doing their own things. He can lift a bear and use it as a weapon, and is able to potentially summon and control a flock of geese, the gnomes that live in the surrounding area, and the skeletal alligators in his stomach. However, even that doesn't seem to get him anywhere else on our list. Sadly, he never really uses his massive size to his advantage, and we never see what his strength is like. The final chess piece next up is the chess queen. Much like in the game they're based off, the queen is the strongest member of the chess group. She has the ability to create and summon powerful gemstones that rain down on the group, as well as lion statues that move across the screen to attack you. What makes her rank here, however, is the fact that she can only be damaged by the cannons that that exist in the arena, meaning that even though the others can only be beat by parries, she is a definitive step up, hence her ranking. The secret optional boss, Angel and Demon, rank next. Despite being a seemingly difficult secret boss that requires a special item and a puzzle to fight, they don't seem all too powerful. They seem to be related to the devil in some way, but this doesn't change the fact that they are very weak bosses as far as we can see. The Angel does not harm you at all, sending projectiles and walls of water, but neither of them seem to damage you. In fact, they're designed to nullify the demon's attacks. The demon only seems capable of pyromancy, shooting fireballs that can be parried or walls of flames that damage. Beyond that, the cloud platform you stand on shoots lightning underneath it. But due to the fact that they can't work together, we really can't rank them any higher. Next up, we have Moonshine Mob. Fought in Bootlegger Boogie, this group of mobsters is made up of four main parts. The Spider Mobster, the Ladybug, the Anteater, and the Snail Eater. While the separate parts don't seem all that strong, their ability to work together can be the final nail in Cuphead's coffin. The Spider Mobster has a wide array of moves at his disposal, summoning other mobsters to chase after you, kicking a caterpillar at you and summoning bombs from the ceiling that explode if you wander into the vicinity. The ladybug has a gramophone that shoots powerful energy waves, and the anteater is a large powerful beast that is hard to deal with. However, what really ranks them this high is the leader snail's ability to fake out the game itself, pretending to be the announcer to trick Cuphead, and by proxy the player, showing immense power. Also, like the other bosses, they hold a mystical ingredient for a powerful baked good made by Salt Baker. But that's sort of besides the point. Next up we have Esther Winchester, who you face during the mission High Noon Hoopla. Esther is a really weird case because her main source of power is her weaponry and her skill in those items. She uses an old-fashioned blunderbuss style rifle that turns into a vacuum. A lasso she uses to grab things and gets help from vultures and other creatures. Her real claim to fame is her ability to survive extreme things, such as being turned into a sausage in a tin can. However, despite this, it's implied she can still be killed, as when beating her tin can form, the face has the trademark cartoon deceased look. If Esther had more abilities beyond her weapons and survivability, she would probably be ranked higher. Cult leader and chiromancer Mortimer Freeze ranks next. Mortimer is the cult leader you face in Snow Cult Scuffle, and seems to be a powerful wizard of some kind. He doesn't do much in his fight, but what he does do is relatively powerful. He can either bring icicles to life, or just summon living icicles that run after the player. He can summon and hit you hard with a giant orange whale, and shoots powerful tarot cards after you as well. 
He's able to fuse with a giant snow golem called Snowlem, and in his final form turns into a giant snowflake that can shoot lasers, snow cones, and moon-shaped projectiles at Cuphead and friends. Mortimer's wide array of skills makes him a threat to deal with, there's no doubt about it. The final regular boss we need to talk about is the Howling Aces, a group of pilot dogs. Made up of a bunch of small dogs, a large bulldog, and a lady dog flying in a plane, and a giant robot-like creature. They rank here mostly because of how good of a team they are, and all the intense abilities they have, ranging from fire hydrant missiles, to lasers, to jetpacks, and everything else in between. They're heavily coordinated and don't seem to fight very often, unlike other groups we see in the series. If it wasn't for the fact that they're outclassed in a million ways by the following bosses and characters, they would be ranked higher. Our bronze medal of power goes to Chef Saltbaker. Saltbaker is initially a nice guy who sends you out on a quest to obtain the items so he could make the Wonder Tart for Miss Chalice. However, after obtaining all the items, he reveals he needs an actual soul to make the tart and is about to take the players when the battle begins. Saltbaker is a powerful individual with actual magic at his disposal. He can levitate items with his magic, shoot powerful boomerangs made of limes, bring pieces of food to life, grow to giant sizes, and control the astral plane like he does with the astral cookie in Wonder Tart. Saltbaker is a powerful being with access to nearly unbeatable magic, but as we know, he is indeed defeated by our silver and gold medalists, hence why he only takes the bronze. Speaking of, tying for the silver medal of power are Cuphead and Mugman. They have to rank together because they're exactly the same in terms of power. Cuphead and Mugman, being the main protagonists, obviously defeat every boss and previous character on our list. They seem intensely strong, fast, and durable, able to take the amount of damage from a bullet and a highly concentrated beam of energy. They have access to immensely powerful items, such as extra health, smoke bombs, and a demonic relic that gives them immense power. Not to mention their amazing array of weaponry, such as spread shots, bombs, and charge shots, each of which are powerful enough in their own right. However, the gold medal of power has to go to Miss Chalice. The reason for ranking Chalice above the boys was simple enough. Not only does she have access to most of the items that the boys have, but she has more abilities. Firstly, while she cannot use charms like the boys, her moveset compensates for this. She can parry while dashing, double jump, and has an invincible dodge roll. She's also the person who held and seemingly created the super arts that Cuphead, Mugman, and eventually she herself uses. Her power is just barely above Cuphead and Mugman, but just enough to earn her the gold medal of power. But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our Cuphead videos. Thanks so much for watching, we'll see you next time.